Welcome to the Terminal Valley Podcast. Uh, I have Sister Adele Marie uh, with me from the Sisters of St. Mary, uh, the campus in Beaverton, Oregon, which incidentally is where both of my kids go to school. Uh, my daughter Jada and my son Nolan, I won't say their ages, but uh, if you know me, you probably know how old they are. Uh, they, they are both enrolled at the Sisters of St. Mary's School. Uh, however, there are also some other ministries that go on as, uh, there as well, uh, which is they have a convent, which is where uh, Sister Adele Marie lives with, was it 49 other nuns? Approximately, yes. Approximately, yes. With 40, uh, 49 other nuns. And they also uh, run a senior care uh, home called uh, Maryville, in addition to having housing for retired clergy. Uh, and Sister Adele Marie, uh, she is actually the financial director. So she has quite a bit on her plate. And uh, she's graciously uh, 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 decided to come and talk with us just about uh, the mission uh, the, and then the resiliency they've shown in trying to figure out how to adapt to the COVID reality. And it's actually a very timely conversation because as of the time of this recording, the governor of the state of Oregon put a new set of restrictions on reopening schools. So, uh, you know, the, uh, the sisters are saying, all right, well, that's okay. We didn't want to celebrate Christmas anyway. We'll just, <laughs> <laughs> we're just going to be in meetings the whole time. <laughs> So, Sister Adele, uh, please uh, welcome, and uh, yeah, please uh, t tell us a little bit about your ministry over at the uh, the campus. Certainly. So I am what, I, what we call, my role is called the president of the Sisters of St. Mary of Oregon Ministries Corporation. And as was noted, we have um, several ministries on our campus. Uh, the school mm -hmm. was founded um, clear back in the uh, early 1900s. Uh, we were known then as um, St. Mary's, and then it changed to St. Mary's Institute, and then it became at some point in the line St. Mary of the, the Valley Academy, and then changed to Valley Catholic. So Valley Catholic um, School on our campus actually serves babies as young as uh, six to eight weeks, all the way up through our seniors in high school, and we have about a thousand students on our campus. So um, Usually, usually they're all on our campus. Right now, they've been doing digital learning, as, as was noted. Um, then we have the Maryville uh, Nursing Facility. Yeah. Um, it has uh, uh, residents um, up to a capacity of 165 uh, residents there, and then uh, another uh, 15 in our memory care unit That's as well. Quite a bit of capacity. Exactly. So um, right there at, at, at Maryville. Um, we have, you know, another hundred, up to about 180, 81 um, residents uh, that can be served on campus. And as with those, our mother house is there. Um, we are about 50 sisters living in the mother house. We have a few small houses on the campus also where some other sisters reside in small um, group living units. And as uh, noted at the other end of the campus, we have our retired clergy, those who have chosen to come live in an uh, duplex style uh, arrangement, um, up, about up to 15 of them can stay there as well. So it's a hop in place when we're all there. Uh, it's even hopping when we're not there. As, uh, as we uh, just said with Doug, um, the governor announced within the last few hours that the protocols and the uh, regulations are shifting again. Um, God bless the poor principals and presidents of schools in our areas that are all going to be swamped with um, trying to shift gears once again, um, I, I just have to hand it to all of them, whether it's the nursing staff or um, it's those teachers that are having to figure out how to shift gears, you know, everybody on campus. And I, I hesitate to name because I'll probably leave people off, but you know, whether you're talking the cafeteria staff or the caregivers that are in the memory care, or either you're talking about the finance people or you're talking about um, HR, anything, whatever you, you say, everybody's having to kind of take a deep breath, pause and um, roll up their sleeves and get after it. And exactly. God bless. Oh, God exactly. Bless. Yes. Yeah, this much, yeah, much, uh, much prayer is needed and appreciated <laughs> in the, uh, in the current environment. But, um, but yeah, I'd love to hear just about how, how you've gone about adapting to all of this, because, you know, when, you know, when COVID came through and you had to do the shutdown orders and, cause I remember during the summer, there was a pretty elaborate plan that was put together to reopen under the state guidelines, but then Beaverton, which is the city where the uh, campus is located, 
uh, was put into a work from home order. So you had to wrap those add up and throw it away. Um, and then, and then yeah, I think now there's been another reopening plan, which you have to wrap that up and throw it away and start over. And that's just, I, I, that's impressed me just the level of resiliency, especially given that you have these other mi ministries, you know, one of which of course is the mother house where not, I'm sorry, not the mother house is Maryville where you have, uh, a lot of people who are, uh, you know, at very high risk if they if a COVID infection comes through. So, you've had to tiptoe very, very. Uh, um, what is it? Uh, you, you've had to put quite a bit of deliberate effort in. Um, and uh, yes, you, you uh, you're, you're either very good at uh, at hiding your anxiety, or you're very good at dealing with it because 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 that would be a <laughs> lot to try to handle. <laughs> well, there there's so many blessings. Um, first of all, you know the campus. And you probably recognize that as you drive your, your children onto campus. Um, I think we have a campus that's permeated with a sense of peace. And that's brought on because of that prayer, you, which you, you spoke about. I think that gives us a grounding in what's essential and helps us um, keep a focus that is not just on the things of this world, but otherworldly too, that, that the best is still yet to come. And then we'll deal with what we have here. And you take a deep breath and, and you figure it out. And whatever administrator is on campus working with these things, um, I have great confidence that they, they're professionals in what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, it, it hits you like a ton of bricks when these things happen, but then everybody regroups and, um, and figures it out. They're really uh, solution seekers okay. and all of them have um, put that, that capacity or that talent to, to the test and, and into action. And as you noted, yes, you, you, you kind of throw it up out and wad it up and throw that plan away. Um, some pieces obviously stick and you've got to keep them, but you know, um, our campus is so unique. Uh, nobody else is quite like us. Again, one is that the, uh, the youngest of the valiants all the way to the, the seniors in high school. But then as you know, with the nursing facility, with the mother house, mm -hmm. um, with the centralized services, um, business things of HR and, and finance. So you have a, a nine to five uh, Monday through Friday work week. You have a 24 seven work week. You've got a, um, a school schedule that's off in the summers. So we have a little bit of everything going on yeah. and the each entity informs the other. It can be challenging too. Um, but the things about um, IT yeah. Um, that a school has to be driven by having more um, quick flexibility to bring on the new learning apps or the different yeah. things that has helped Maryville to be at the front of its game okay. as far as bringing apps or different things to computers into the, the Maryville um, the facility. Um, Maryville's uh, awareness of all things healthcare driven mm -hmm. has informed us um at the mother house about how we can do best provision of care for our sisters as they age. Okay. The same token as COVID hits, Maryville is going to be the one that's got the frontline um, information about um, how to uh, use PPE and how we're wow. going to be addressing our, our different needs and what are the different um, quarantine and isolation rules or um, what about this vaccine as it becomes yeah. available. So, all of those pieces inform one another. Um, it can be challenging, but I think um, because we're so close to Maryville, I think the schools benefit with that piece as well, yeah. um, the medical side. And I think, you know, for the residents being um, around the children, that's also helpful and brings their spirits up. Uh, even as the early learning school got back in session, the little tiny ones were running over and having little um, scavenger hunts for gingerbread men in the lawn outside the Maryville windows. And oh, so the nice. residents wheeled their wheelchairs up and got to watch that. And that's sweet. You know, <laughs> it's uh it feeds itself, I guess, in, in a hopefully symbiotic way. That's um, well, well, it's, I, I was going to say, but yeah, you know, it's, it, it, it's nice to have some heartwarming stories because, you know, they seem to be in short supply lately. So it's, mm -hmm. you got, you got to save them when they come. <laughs> indeed. Indeed. That is absolutely true. <laughs> uh, but, um, uh, you know, uh, but, but yeah, I mean, I think it's just, uh, it's just, I, I just think it's amazing, you know, the, you know, the, the, the work that's being done. And um, I just love to get your thoughts on just, you know, how the, um, you know, how mission driven organizations have been adapting, you know, because, 
um, you know, especially like, you know, say a lot of the colleges and universities, a lot of the, the uh, you know, private, particularly parochial schools have been struggling lately and COVID has just made it all that much more hard. Um, and so I think, yeah, you know, keeping these mission driven organizations going has been, it, it, it's required a lot of creativity. Um, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd love to hear a little more about uh, just about some of the, some of the ways that you've been creatively solving problems. Well, I think um, lots of meetings, we come together. Um, I always am, am very, very um, impressed at where your answers come from. <laughs> um, I treasure the fact that I have a, an executive management team where all the presidents on campus, um, all the heads of um, the main departments that serve the entities, um, whether it's IT, facilities, grounds maintenance, uh, HR, we're all sitting around a table, something comes up and um, somebody who may not be in that particular industry um, has insights, perhaps because they're a step away from it, has insights that can then inform all the rest of us to, to do better or to think about it from a different perspective. Yeah. And I think those things have helped us um, to be resilient as well. Um, you know, sometimes your IT guy is the best guy to have given you something about how to consider what you might do on a, a nursing um, answer. I mean, who mm -hmm. knew that they have iPods that have an app now that you can hold up to a wound and it records from hours to days how fast that wound is healing. And the oh. IT guy who doesn't really like, you know, the, the blood and things, he's the one who had the insight to be able to help us get that. So I think because we have that um, variety of, of input and um, different perspectives, that's helped us. Um, I think, as I noted before, because you have a, um, hopefully you're grounded in, in something that uh, keeps us um, respectful and honoring what is most important, I think, in life and, and after life. Um, I think that has given us maybe a leg up and other mission centered or mission driven places as well. Um, and then the folks have been so generous and so um, very open. Um, they have brought in, I, I think maybe this year as even we did a kind of a different um, collection for Valley Catholic giving, mm -hmm. um, helping out those who are in need and need extra meals or um, extra things to help their families at this time. Uh, I heard and saw some pictures that the cafeteria was overflowing with um, food baskets and gifts and cards and, um, you know, to use at stores. Yeah. And um, it was out of, out of the cafeteria and down the hall. And um, maybe oh, that, that, and well, then, it, yeah. you know, and, and then with the fire too, they're down in the um, Staten yeah. area. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the sisters' relatives are from that area. And the response in days, I think we spent sent down to them over $15,000 worth of goods and, and cards and, and mon monetary support. So oh, that's, that's great. Well, I mean, and I think that's, that's especially good to hear uh, just because I think in the, um, you know, in the 24 hour news cycle, Twitter, social media era, uh, it's like just, I, I I think it's it's really easy to you know if you pay attention to the news to just think that everything's coming apart at the seams. I mean, and there's a certain degree to which that may be the case, um, but I think it's you should also have to remember that there are a lot of really really good people that are doing very helpful things, and it's important to it's important to remember that. I know for me, mm -hmm. one of the things that uh, that I try I'm trying to do is consume as little social media and mainstream news as humanly possible. Uh, just because I don't really find that it improves my life in any particular way. Uh, and so, yeah, I, you know, I, I love uh, you know, hearing about these kind, this kind of work that's being done and uh, getting a chance to, you know, to meet people that are, that are doing this, uh, that are doing this work, because I think that, you know, it's, it's really easy to get mad that things are the way they are, but, you know, somebody's going to have to do something to make it better. <laughs> It's, and, you know, what, waiting for somebody else to, to, to do it for you, I think, is generally not a great strategy. So uh, I really I just I really appreciate the work that's being done. And, uh, you know, hats off. Um, I, I especially uh, I especially appreciated the um, the idea of, uh, you know, collaboration to, uh, you know, to address the uh, the problem. I mean, it sounds it sounds deceptively simple. 
you know, you'd say, okay, well, you get a lot of people together and everybody come up with ideas. So you, okay, well, that, that's really simple. Have you ever tried to get a lot of people together <laughs> and have them come up with ideas that, that everybody agrees on? It's not so simple. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, and you know, our campus, um, we have about 500 employees. Yeah. Um, and so, and as you have that diverse set of industries, whether yeah. it's the healthcare versus the education versus a, the more um, typical office staff um, type uh, of, of engagement for, in the workforce, um, it's, it can be extremely challenging because yeah. people can come at it from a, maybe a little bit more siloed view. Uh -huh. um, but I think we've worked really hard to open up those opportunities and um, cross pollinate. So well, that's excellent. I, I mean, and, and I think that's actually the kind of thing that needs to happen right now is that, um, you know, I'm, I'm very hopeful that one of the things that'll come out of, you know, just all of dealing with COVID is that, um, you know, because I think that there's, there's just sort of a culture that's evolved of everybody kind of trying to one up everyone else. And I suppose there's a certain amount of that you're never going to get away from, but I'm, I'm hoping that the, some of the challenges that have had to be overcome are kind of getting people to have more of a uh, you know, I guess you'd say team first, mission first mindset um, and, you know, and, and be able to at least put that on the shelf for a little while. You know, at the end of the day, people are human and, and you know, people are going to be who they are. And That's for sure. it's, you know, it, it's really easy to point your finger and say, oh, look at what a bad person that is. But, you know, you, people are human. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'm reasonably certain, actually, no, not no more. I, I know for a certifiable fact that people could look at plenty of things I've said and done over the years and <laughs> had reason to think that, 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 that I, uh, that I could have made a better decision. So, so that's, I think that's just, that's always going to be with us. I know. I, well, you, as you nailed it kind of there too, what, what have we learned and um, what are we finding is most essential now during this time of COVID COVID um, you know, reaching out and giving somebody a hug, how long has it been since that's been the case? Um, you know, right now I'm in a kind of a, a strange situation. I had a, my mother took a tumble and so I've been staying at her home and I'm actually working remotely myself. Yeah. Um, but, um, she, uh, uh, I hadn't seen her pr probably, um, three months at all. And that was only in her backyard on her birthday for an hour. And we were masked up and, and uh, until I was spent a couple of days in the hospital with her overnight to um, yeah. to assist with that, you know, I haven't really had much up close and personal time with my mom for for at least nine months. And um, so you you think about those things that we hold dear that maybe um, we took for granted. And yeah. I hope we don't lose track of what we have um, learned from this about what are those dear and precious things that we need to make sure we we um, hold tight. And uh, and don't don't lose sight of those, um, even well, as we get back to normal, whatever that is. And I think that's especially true because, like, one of the things that I that I keep thinking is that right, you know, with the lockdowns, you basically kind of end up in sort of a digital isolation, which, in one way or another, is kind of where social media is pushing a lot of people anyway. But the problem is, it's like once you kind of take it to an extreme to where you really are either not you can't leave your house but you're not supposed to leave your house and you're supposed to and you're dramatically limiting your interactions it's really not that fun mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's it's you know it, it's just it's really not that fun and you know and you know and, that, and it's like you know railing on facebook doesn't make it any more fun frankly <laughs> um right, and right. So, yeah I'm, I'm really looking forward to being able to uh to, to re-engage with people and uh, you know, just you know, be able to have more human interactions because you know, I think that's I think that's how people were meant to interact. Mm -hmm. Well, and and certainly some of the things that Valley Catholic holds dear, the sisters have held dear for a long time. You know, the the arts, um, wow. the fine arts, um, those aren't meant to be done all alone. I mean, we can create, but they're meant to be shared. Whether it's music or or painting or any kind of artistic en endeavor. Um, it's all the more appreciated when it's shared with others, right? Oh, of course, um, yeah. That's... So I think that's something that um, we will enjoy, even as I, I've seen delightful things put together. I, I saw the school's um, concert and uh, some of the little tiny ones, they put together a little Christmas um, play. <laughs> and um, that was pretty interesting as well. It was done virtually, certainly. Mm -hmm. Tremendous amount of work to... Um, 
record it and then sync it later. I, I don't know how the orchestra and those different um, groups, the choirs did that, but it anyway. It would have required a lot of editing. Many, many hours to it sync it up to have it go as editing. well as it did. But um, I, I just am amazed at um, how, again, we might have taken some of those things for granted. Who mm -hmm. knew that going into a, an orchestra practice um, or class one day would become something that you would treasure because, oh my goodness, we can all hear that the that the flutes came in too soon or something. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but but at least you know we we uh, we had that right next to us and and I think uh, there's there's plenty to take away from this to to hold close to our hearts. Uh, I think that I think uh, I think that is an excellent message uh, to uh, <laughs> to conclude with. Let's uh, yeah, give me uh, uh, give, give give everybody one last thought to uh, take into the into the rest of their day and take into the holidays. Well, I guess the last thought would be that, you know, Advent is a time where we're preparing for for the coming of, of Christ, not only into this world, but into our hearts. And it's even the world in our time. Uh, December is when um, we, we shift gears and the nights become shorter, actually, starting yeah. December 21st. So as that new light is coming into our world, I was going to say, yeah, the, yeah, the days are getting longer now, and the nights are shorter. That's true. Yeah. So it's it's what? the light of the world coming into the into reality, and that's happening within um, nature. It's happening for us as Christians who believe in the coming of Christ, and it's coming into us in the world with the vaccine on the on the verge of being able to to bring more light and openness into all of our hearts. And so, um, with all that, I I just um, am hopeful, and I ask that all of um, your listeners remain hopeful and that we um, come together uh, remembering what COVID taught us and how we can um, shift gears together, think and collaborate together and, and make a difference. That is outstanding. Well, you have a wonderful uh, rest of your day and uh, everybody listening, have a wonderful rest of your day too. And uh, I'm looking forward to talking again. Sounds Thank good. You so much. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so following up on that conversation with Sister Adele Marie, there's a few things that really stuck out in my mind. Uh, the first thing that really um, that really spoke to me was just the amount of work that goes into these mission-driven organizations and how important it is uh, to to really help them uh, continue to thrive. And so I think a lot of times that you know, they really rely on fundraising efforts that have been pretty seriously hampered by the the COVID pandemic. And so one of the things at least that is really that I'm really thinking about is ways that I can support my local mission driven organizations uh, to really help them continue uh, fulfilling their mission in, in the community. Uh, just because I think that these organizations are what really make communities special and the things that really differentiate versus just having a high concentration of corporate entities. You know, of course, right, there's nothing wrong with corporate entities by, you know, by any means, um, you know, but I think there has to be a balance. And I think that it, it's really easy to overlook a lot of these mission-driven organizations. And especially with all of the public funding shortfalls um, due to the reductions in tax revenues because of COVID, I think there's the people who are at risk are going to become more and more dependent on these community organizations uh, just to be able to make it. And I think that it's it's really important to, uh, to, to give them our support and to really stand behind them. Uh, and so that's actually um, kind of leads into one of the things that I do for a living is that I actually do expense reduction consulting. And one of my principal uh, missions is actually mission-driven organizations. Uh, and I go in and I help them reduce their expense footprint. Uh, and I, don't, I do this with no cost out of pocket up front. And I do this because I really want to help them succeed. Uh, if, if you are a part of a mission-driven organization or if you know somebody who is, uh, please uh, have them connect with me. Uh, just you can uh, schedule time on my calendar at www.meetdug.biz. That's M-E-E-T-D-O-U-G.B-I-Z. Uh, let's just talk for a couple of minutes and I would love to get to know more about your organization and uh, see if maybe we can work together. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I'll talk to you next week. Thank you for listening to the Terminal Value Podcast. Share it with your friends by sending them to TerminalValuePodcast.com. For more information, please visit BusinessOfLifeLLC.com for full access to Doug's products and services.
All rights reserved. No part of this broadcast may be produced in any form by any means without written permission from Business of Life, LLC. All trademarks and brands referred to herein are the property of their respective owners.